This podcast is brought to you by the Ministry of ICT and Innovation in partnership with GIZ and the Digital Transformation Center, Rwanda. Hello and welcome to Tech Decoded, where we're decoding Rwanda's digital transformation today. And today I'm joined by the Honorable Eve Iradukunda, who is going to talk to us about uh, the Global AI Summit and Rwanda's transformation when it comes to specifically AI adoption and development. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very excited to kind of dive into this conversation. But before we get too deep into it, Mm. there are some uh, myths that we have to first address before we set the tone for the conversation. And the first myth that we have for today is AI will lead to widespread job losses in Africa. Is that true? Is that fact? Is that false? I think that's a, a false uh, mm. assessment, and maybe a pessimistic assessment on the impact of AI on job creation. Mm. I believe before AI will disrupt any jobs or kill any jobs, it will create massive number of jobs. Mm. I think the uh, determining factor on where you find yourselves in those two different camps mm-hmm. is what are we investing today mm. to learn, to upskill mm. uh, population, to be ready mm. uh, with the AI transition that is coming. That's good. And it falls into the next myth, which is AI makes people heavily dependent on it, making us weaker. This is not really true. I think mm. when you actually embrace AI, mm-hmm. it shoots the productivity capability. I think we stand a chance to be more productive, Mm. to see more impact on uh, investment that is being made Mm. if we embrace AI. I think uh, human capabilities uh, can uh, be expanded Mm. if we use AI Mm. tools uh, holistically, Mm -hmm. uh, but also if we embrace how AI can be integrated within our day-to-day. And the final myth is Africa's infrastructure is too poor to support AI uh, development and adoption. True or false? And, and this is really uh, a, a fair assessment. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, quite true. Where we stand today, mm-hmm. without any significant changes in investment, mm-hmm. we are not ready. Mm. We are not ready to adopt, scale, innovate mm. within AI and other emerging technologies. Mm. So we must double down our investment mm. in revamping infrastructure. Right. As we get into the, the thick of the uh, conversation, could you set the scene on what Rwanda's landscape looks like in terms of AI development mm. or just adopting? in general. No, thank you. And this is a timely conversation that we are having Mm -hmm. uh, as we host the Global uh, Artificial Intelligence Summit Mm -hmm. uh, on Africa for the first time in Africa. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rwanda uh, developed uh, the national uh, AI uh, policy Mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago, and it's been a guiding uh, tool Mm -hmm. in terms of how we develop uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, Rwanda had already been on a journey of digitization where uh, some of the enabling infrastructure, Mm. uh, the skills, uh, development, Mm. um, digitization of services, um, both government and private sector services, All of those are key enabler to be able to now leverage emerging technologies mm. and, and artificial intelligence. Mm. So in hosting the summit in particular is to uh, make sure that this is a journey that we take on as a continent because yes. when you think about the, uh, the investments required mm. from infrastructure perspective, mm. adopting different use cases, mm. it cannot be a siloed effort exactly. because the innovation that we expect to mm. take place in our ecosystem mm. is one where we develop tools that can scale and expand beyond mm. the boundaries of the country. Right. And so uh, we have really been doubling down on uh, structuring a, an environment that mm. enables that growth mm. uh, from a policy point of view. Mm. Uh, we have ethical guidelines mm. that will support those that are innovating, those that are research, doing research mm. on different AI models. And now, now most importantly, uh, bringing it all together mm. uh, into national strategies that are embedded in how we are digitizing services Mm. Uh, and how uh, AI can be embedded in the tools that we are developing. Mm. So it's really been a journey, and I think uh, today we are seeing, uh, starting to see mm. adoption yeah. uh, in agriculture and healthcare and mm-hmm. finance, mm. and we want to continue to encourage innovation mm. right. by leveraging AI. Right, and with that spirit of collaboration, what's Rwanda's unique value proposition to the region or even Africa at large? No, thank you. Rwanda's uh, strength has really been at uh, being forward-looking and embracing this technology transformation. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you look at the policy landscape Mm -hmm. uh, and the regulatory landscape, it's one where uh, it's always guided with our our strategy to be a proof of concept 
have. Mm. To do that, you have to be agile, mm -hmm. right? When you think about regulation, uh, historically, it's been a regulation that is almost uh, penalizing innovators, mm -hmm. and that does not really give a chance. But what we have been really doing uh, uh, in the recent years is to make sure that our regulatory frameworks mm. enable uh, innovation to take place. Mm. Because uh, without uh, that, you, you're not flexible enough to start mm. benefiting from the new solutions that are being created. So that's mm. number one, is really our strength is having a regulatory uh, framework and business uh, environment that enables and mm. embraces innovation. Uh, the second thing is, is talent. Mm. Uh, we've invested in programs such as the Coding Academy, but also really promoting science and technology uh, within our education education uh, system, mm. all the way from primary, secondary, and university level, yeah. and partnerships with uh, in, in key institutions that are transforming how we bring talent into mm. the market. So partnership Carnegie Mellon University, yeah. uh, which has Africa campus that is training more than 25 nationalities mm. at master's level. Mm. Uh, the Africa Institute of Mathematical Science, these mm. are training advanced uh, mathematicians, data scientists, researchers. Mm. Uh, all these are key uh, talent and skills that are required mm. to actually train AI models. So yeah. I think those um, key things, uh, mm. including uh, co continuous investment infrastructure, position yeah. Rwanda mm. to be a hub uh, where uh, people can come find an environment that is ready, talent that is ready mm. uh, to create AI solutions. Right. Mm. Um, a lot of the conversations and panels that we've been listening to on the sidelines of the Global AI Summit on mm. Africa, a lot of them are centered around inclusion and equitable access to AI development yeah. and adoption. How is Rwanda approaching this uh, principle? So it's been very interesting because uh, when we started talking about the AI policy, we realized that uh, uh, different sectors had different level of maturity. And it goes back to our journey of digitization. Mm -hmm. in, in some sectors, we already put in, in place si the, the, uh, systems. Mm -hmm. um, and through these systems, able to generate uh, amount of data. Uh, and um, uh, you cannot talk about AI without a strong uh, data ecosystem. Okay. And so we had to do a landscape to understand where do we have uh, likelihood of success in mm. deploying AI uh, tools and deploying uh, data sets uh, to innovators so that mm. they can figure out how do they start innovating. So uh, agriculture mm. and healthcare, uh, as well as finance, became mm. the top three sectors where we realize mm. there is a lot of uh, opportunity mm. to uh, innovate. Mm. And so we're seeing already uh, adoption there. But mm. it does not leave behind other sectors because yeah. the different AI tools uh, can be applied, mm -hmm. again, either for productivity mm. uh, improvement, mm. uh, but also uh, specifically in those key sectors, mm. we are seeing um, mm. uh, much more maturity in terms of adoption yeah. uh, because of the existing data ecosystem mm. uh, that those sectors have been able to put in place. Right. Uh, then what about the question on inclusion of, say, women, mm. young people, mm. and then also people with disabilities? Mm. How is that conversation then? So I think that question takes me back to the mm. challenge of uh, talent. Yeah. When we actually, in our journey this digitization, mm. it became very clear that you cannot do just infrastructure and build uh, exactly. systems and put on night services mm. uh, without training the population. And so I already talked about some of the academic programs, but mm. another effort that we've been doing is uh, to train citizens across the board mm. um, with digital literacy. Mm. Uh, that's on one side. And the second part is making sure that there is uh, access to uh, smart devices, mm. because any of these systems we're digitizing or mm. these AI tools where we are putting in place mm. is so that it, people can use them. And yeah. so smart devices uh, has been uh, important to, mm. to make sure that they're accessible, mm. they're affordable. Mm. Uh, and the lastly, it's mm. it's about the cost of connectivity. Mm. Um, as the years came, mm. and seeing really, again, going back to the enabling environment, mm. we see providers that are creating uh, pricing models that mm. make it possible for people to access a broadband right. and also to access devices. Mm. So those are very important. Mm. So in our approach, we prioritize uh, women. Mm. 
be it in academic programs mm. uh, as well as uh, uh, training the citizens mm. um, and also uh, having programs that specifically target women. Uh, mm. We had, uh, for, for instance, uh, one of the, the campaign around mm. smartphone ownership was yeah. targeting uh, women leaders of mm. cooperatives, of uh, trading uh, uh, groups mm. uh, at the lowest level in rural areas. Mm. And through our network of digital ambassadors, these are young people that are hired, trained, and deployed across the country to train. Uh, the citizens on uh, uh, digital literacy and enabling them to adopt some of the tools. Mm. So we've seen really impact um, uh, with some of the farmers uh, yeah. adopting some of these tools, mm -hmm. giving them information, yeah. timely information. We've seen the same for community health workers mm. uh, in partnership with the Ministry of Health. Uh, there are tools uh, that are being developed to make sure that community health workers can support yeah. healthcare delivery at mm. the primary care uh, level, mm. and we're seeing success in that. And we continue again to emphasize on, mm. on, on uh, uh, women, uh, but most importantly on people with disability. Mm -hmm. We have a program uh, that is uh, targeting training them. Mm -hmm. This is, requires uh, more uh, specialized skills and specialized devices. And so we've been working with uh, 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 the National uh, uh, Council of uh, People with uh, Disability uh, to find organizations that already cater or support uh, uh, people with disabilities mm. to come up with different training right. uh, on digital literacy. Mm. Uh, and it's really been uh, successful mm -hmm. and we continue to work with them to mm. find uh, tools mm. to make them accessible right. and also to, to bridge the gap when it comes to mm. how they use these tools. And I think that's also like a, a point to urge the private sector to also mm create solutions that are targeted towards people with disabilities. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the Def Can Talk uh, application mm -hmm. from Ghana, I believe, mm -hmm. which is helping uh, people with disabilities, uh, hearing impairment, mm -hmm. uh, specifically to actually study in regular schools, not just in special schools for people with disabilities. Perhaps that's also like uh, an element for us to engage uh, the private sector to develop more tools such as that, um, mm -hmm. so that no one is left behind, really. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's, this is the beauty of uh, these emerging technologies, is that you start seeing applications that are developed that can adapt mm -hmm. and also can, that can um, uh, essentially uh, be, uh, understand the behavior and the needs mm -hmm. of a specific individual because there's no uh, such a thing like a one-size-fits-all. Mm -hmm. uh, in, I think in, in the previous era of technology, mm -hmm. uh, there was off-of-the-shelf uh, products yeah. uh, that may or may not fit, but mm -hmm. now with uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. these tools can adapt mm -hmm. to the needs. Right. Uh, they can adapt to a specific individual mm -hmm. uh, and be configured through uh, machine learning yeah. uh, to be able to, uh, to to serve better. So mm. the innovation we've seen in the yeah. exhibitions mm. and the different uh, research that is going on is promising, mm -hmm. uh, not just for people with disabilities, but in general on mm. different sectors on how they apply mm. uh, and respond uh, to yeah. better service delivery in Indeed. general. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, there's a program that you're heavily um, focused on at the moment, the One Million Coders program. Mm -hmm. It is incredible. It is. I can see how it's going to impact the young people of Rwanda mm -hmm. and people who are in Rwanda, not despite where you're from, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there's like a question on that, uh, mm -hmm. which is specific to maybe people within the creative sector. Mm -hmm. They're feeling left behind because uh, the priority is on tech roles mm -hmm. and upskilling people who are who have uh, computer engineering degrees or they're within the cybersecurity space or mm -hmm. basically they're just coders. Yeah, yeah. What about the creative industry? It's a very good question, and, and I'm glad you point out the program, the One Million Coders. It's a, a part of the uh, government of Rwanda's national strategy for transformation from mm. uh, 2025 to 2029. Mm. We have an ambitious goal of mm. training one million uh, people on uh, basic coding mm -hmm. uh, or digital skills, uh, but also 500,000 professionals mm -hmm. that we hope can access uh, advanced skills mm -hmm. to enable use of technology and mm -hmm. innovation and also unlocking entrepreneurship uh, potential. This is a very critical program because when you look at the future of employment, mm -hmm. not just in Rwanda but globally, mm -hmm. we are seeing more and more people transitioning into uh, tech-driven uh, mm -hmm. uh, environments. Yeah. And, um, it, it, aligns also with Vision 2050, where mm. we want to be a knowledge-based mm. uh, country. Mm. So why did we start this program? Mm. We, we think 
our young people, mm. when you look at uh, uh, the demographics of the country, mm. many majority are in school. Yeah, we have over four million uh, people mm. in formal education. Mm. But when you, you look at, um, uh, again, the demographic, mm. you have so many young people mm. that are capable mm -hmm. of learning these yeah. digital skills mm -hmm. and applying them to the jobs that exist uh, on, on the market. Mm. And so we use uh, one million coders, and mm. the coders word here is used loosely mm. uh, because it's not just software development. Mm. Uh, so this is good news to the creatives. Mm. We're also looking at creative technologies mm. that can enhance outcome of creativity, mm. be it in graphic design, mm. motion graphics, game animation, in music, mm. uh, photography, and other areas where technology can actually amplify mm. uh, how these skills of creative Creatives can be mm. uh, brought into the market. So we're looking at a wide, much wider spectrum. Uh, of course, uh, we consider also uh, software development, mm. but within that, we look at also skills that can be specialized when mm. it comes to cybersecurity, right. artificial intelligence, and other emerging technologies such as uh, IoT, mm. drone uh, mm. technologies. So what we are looking at is mm. creating a quite a, a, a wider pool mm. of digitally um, capable mm -hmm. uh, talent. Yeah. Uh, and that's why when you look at the programs we've been promoting, they mm. range from basic digital literacy mm. all the way to advanced program because right. you cannot mm. uh, be uh, a software developer, you cannot be mm. a competent creative within the technology mm. era without mm. some of the basic digital literacy. Right. So we, we know it's a five-year journey. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already started seeing uh, really success uh, mm. or in terms of programs, mm -hmm. uh, really good programs, mm -hmm. but also in terms of young people taking up the challenge right. and investing their time to learn uh, these digital skills. Yeah. I mean, no offense when I ask this question, mm -hmm. but uh, especially when it comes to like education, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who do take up certifications of mm -hmm. all sorts, mm -hmm. and the skills are not necessarily matching the demand of those yeah. skills within yeah. the market. Mm -hmm. Do we have a mismatch here when it comes to the program? And I'm glad you asked this question. It's mm -hmm. very important that we tackle this mismatch uh, yeah. issue, which we have seen, and, and a lot of the programs you see, they are mostly uh, a patch mm. uh, because you graduated, went to school, four mm. years of university, but you come out in the job market, your skills, you feel like they're ir irrelevant exactly. to, to the market needs. Mm. So this is why part of the uh, initial efforts in the One Million Coders Initiative is actually to assess the market mm. demand. So we are not training uh, just for the sake of uh, ticking the box. Mm -hmm. We're actually driven by what's the market demand. Mm. So when we, 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 we promote our partners mm. in terms of training, mm. we're looking at partners that have a track record mm. of um, converting the, their graduates into employment. Mm. But also, we, we are, we've done a study uh, to understand not just the, the local demand, but mm. the global demand, mm. so that we can put young people on a pathway uh, for employment. Mm. So we have partners such as um, uh, the Global Business Services Initiative, mm. uh, which is championed by Harambe with the support of the MasterCard Foundation. Mm. It's a partnership between the Ministry of ICT and Innovation mm. and the Rwanda Development Board, mm. where we have seen companies actually come set up here yeah. uh, through uh, business process outsourcing, mm -hmm. uh, IT outsourcing, mm -hmm. and we're seeing uh, close to 5,000 mm. young people employed by these companies. Mm. And we know this market globally is quite uh, big. Mm. Countries like India, Philippines, mm. uh, Eastern Europe mm. have been able to have uh, uh, millions of people employed mm. within this sector. So yeah. in our efforts, mm. we have to be demand driven. Mm. Uh, we, we're going to be only celebrating and showcasing and mm. supporting yeah. programs that are pu putting young people on a pathway to be employed. Right. Of course, uh, starting at the lowest uh, level possible mm -hmm. in employment, but then continuing to train them mm. and invest in them until they get, they get to expert level. Yes. And these jobs are available mm. uh, globally uh, through a gig economy that is developing. Right, that's beautiful. Maybe to end this conversation on a lighter note, uh, there are people who are still afraid of AI and afraid that it will take their jobs or just in general, like it will take over the world. What do you mm. have to say about that to them? No, I would say, yeah. please embrace AI. Mm. I think uh, you tend to gain uh, mm. if you position yourself 
uh, in an optimistic view, mm -hmm. you tend to amplify what you're doing, whether you are employed, whether you are studying, uh, in any sector, mm. AI will amplify your productivity. Mm. And don't be afraid. Mm. I think before AI will kill any jobs in our context, yeah. it will create More millions jobs. of jobs that uh, that mm. we desperately mm. need. Now that's a great way to end the conversation. Uh, one mm. more point I would add to it is the things that you're afraid of, you're already using, whether it's Google Maps, whether it's Google in general, mm. and all this stuff, because AI is not just limited to general. Generative AI. Mm. That's all the time we have for today's conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in to Tech Decoded. Stay tuned and keep commenting your thoughts and whatnot. And yeah, stay creative, stay innovative. This podcast is brought to you by the Ministry of ICT and Innovation in partnership with GIZ and the Digital Transformation Center Rwanda.